Around this time every year, I decide that it's time for me to actually dive deep into my computer and get rid of the things that just need to go away. And I'm not the best at cleaning the up stuff throughout the year, so I always find just a ton of cruff that has just kind of accumulated over a year of computer use. Even when I've hopped distros many times, there's still stuff that kind of transfers over between hops that just really doesn't need to be there. So what I thought I would do today is talk about five applications that can help you do your spring cleaning on your Linux machines. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so the first application is called BleachBit, and what BleachBit basically does is it deletes temporary files. Now, in some way, what I mean when I say temporary files, I mean files that are associated with things that are downloaded on your computer, things that accumulate through system use, stuff like that. Usually we're talking about caches and cookies and system logs and stuff like that. Now, one of the things I find this most useful for is clearing browser files. So if you use multiple browsers and you want to delete the cookies and the cache and stuff like that of all those browsers all at the same time, this is a way you can do it. You can also delete histories and stuff like that. So your bash history, your vim history and stuff like that, those can be deleted. And basically what it does is it saves you space on your machine. And in the case of the browser files, it can actually speed up your browser because a lot of times with more cookies and caches and stuff like that, the bigger those files are, the slower your browser is, and you can actually speed those things up by deleting them. Now, one thing you'll need to know is that BleachBit comes with two different versions when you install it. One of them is just the regular plain old vanilla version. The other one allows you to run the version as root. And you want to avoid that version unless you know absolutely what you're doing because there are some files in that version that you can delete that will break your system if you delete them. So you should only mess around with that stuff if you know absolutely what you're doing. So that is BleachBit. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So the next one on the list is called Dupe Guru. Now what Dupe Guru does is it basically finds duplicates on your system. And it does so in a fairly easy way. So what you do is just select a directory, select the application mode that you want to it to be in so a lot of times you are looking for duplicate pictures or duplicate music whatever uh, or if you if it's other things just hit standard and then you hit scan and it will scan your your directory that you selected for duplicates and then it will show you a list of the things that are actually that you have more than one of and it's fairly simple and then it allows you to take that list and either move the duplicates to different files move them to trash move the, just delete them you can rename them whatever you want to do there's a ton of different actions that you can do on the duplicates and this will mean that you no longer have five different photos of your family reunion that are all exactly the same or whatever uh, one of the things that I find this useful for is my wallpapers. A lot of times I download a wallpaper not realizing that I've already downloaded it five times. And I don't really need five copies of that wallpaper. So I, I run this and it'll allow me to pare that down so I only have one copy or whatever. So uh, that is Dupe Guru. It's actually really good. Now, I, one thing I will say is that the larger the directory that you're scanning, the longer that it will take. So just know that... If you want to pare that time down just a little bit, drill down into the directory structure as much as possible so that the folders are smaller, or at least possibly smaller, and you will save some time on scanning. If you are further up in the directory structure and you've selected the recurs recursive scanning, it will, it will take quite a long time because it's going to drill down into every directory below it. So uh, that is Dupe Guru. Now the next one on the list is called... Qdirstat, Q-D-I-R-S-T-A-T. Now, what basically what this does is it allows you to scan a drive and find the largest files on those drives. And what this will be helpful for is locating those files that are just taking up a crap load of space on your hard drives. So if you have an external hard drive, chances are you're probably using it for backups. And one of the things that I've been guilty of for a long time is I make duplicate backups of my music collection over and over and over again. I have like probably 20 different backups of my music collection. It's really dumb. It's all in one hard drive and I don't need that many. My, my music collection doesn't change that often, so I don't really need that many backups of my music collection. So using something like QDirstat, I can scan 
my external hard drive and find all of those files that are just super huge and then do things with them. I can delete them, I can move them, whatever I want to do. And while I will say that the program here is a little complicated and it's definitely not the prettiest thing in the world, it definitely does its job. And it gives you a visual representation of the drive, so you can kind of see w where the directories are, where the big files are, you can locate the biggest file on the drive, and so on and so forth. There's just a ton of stuff here you can do, and it will allow you to hopefully save quite a bit of room on your, your hard drive, on, whether it's your internal hard drive or your external hard drive, whatever it is. One thing I will caution you for is that once you delete something, obviously, it's gone. So make sure you're either knowing what, exactly what you're doing and deleting stuff that you know you can delete uh, without being sad about it or, you know, have backup. Obviously, you should always have a backup. But th that is QDurstat. This is one of the applications that I always install and I don't use it as often as I shouldn't use it because I should definitely u use it once a month, but usually it's once or twice a year, even though I have it always installed. And it will it just allows me to save a whole bunch of space because I'm always backing up stuff that I don't really need to back up or just have a whole bunch of files that I can just delete and save some space. So that is QDurstat. Okay, so the next one on the list is a little bit hard to explain, and it's actually... Uh, a twofer so you're getting two different recommendations here and they're basically to do the same thing just one's in the terminal one's a GUI so what we're talking about here is rsync now rsync itself is a terminal based application that allows you to basically back up your system and there's just a ton of different options for this and a ton of different ways you can go about doing it and I'm not going to cover all those in those, this video but you'll see at least a command or a script that I run and what this does for me is it downloads all of the stuff from my home directory into a place on an external hard drive. And one of the greatest things about this whole thing is that I discovered something, a flag called dash dash exclude, and that allows me to exclude certain directories on my in my home directory from being backed up at all. So it takes care of that whole thing I was talking about earlier where I have backed up a whole bunch of directories of my music collection this way i can exclude that music direct collection and the same thing with like my isos directory and so on and so forth and that means that i can not have a whole bunch of extra space that i don't need what rsync basically does is it takes whatever directory you are that you want and then backs it up to another directory in another place that's really all it does think of it as cloning it could it can clone a whole hard drive it does that there's a ton of different flags and stuff that you can use in order to make it either verbose or exclude things or exclude things of certain sizes there's just a ton of stuff i highly recommend getting into the main man page and checking all the flags out that you can use there's also a lot of tutorials online if you're interested in me making a tutorial make sure you hit the subscribe button i'd really appreciate that now if the terminal based version of rsync doesn't suit you like you don't want to deal with all the flags and all that nonsense there is a GUI front end for rsync it's called grsync and what grsync does is it basically does everything rsync does but in a GUI so it gives you buttons and check boxes and stuff in the top form here you put the directory of the source so if you're doing slash home you want to back up all of your home directory you can do that in the bottom path area you put the the destination so if you, your external hard drive or whatever and then you select your options you hit the play button and it will back up your directory one of the things you can do then is save the profile so what this will do is it will save those paths and all your options to a file so that when you come back the next time you can just find that profile it'll save remember everything that you set you just hit the play button again and it will then uh, do another backup you'll have to make sure that you know what the options that you've set so that you know whether or not it's going to delete the backup you did previously so if you notice in the, the rsync script that i showed earlier in the b-roll one of the things that I do is that in every backup that I do, it creates a new directory with the date on it. So I don't know if grsync will actually allow you to do something like that. So just make sure you be careful with, with the backup so that you don't overwrite things that you don't want to overwrite. So that is rsync and grsync. Okay, so the last one on the list is called Stacer. Now, Stacer is an application that is kind of a jack of all trades. It does an absolute ton of stuff. So it does a little bit of what BleachBit does. It'll allow you to delete package caches, crash reports, application logs, 
uh, caches into the trash and stuff like that. It will also allow you to see system stats, so things like CPU usage, memory usage, network usage, and so on. And on top of that, it will also allow you to do a system-wide search, which for whatever reason I couldn't get to work, but I think that uh, I was just using it wrong. It will also allow you to see what applications are being started up upon system startup. You can also change those things and delete those entries and turn them off and on, whatever you want to do. And it'll also allow you to see system services. So the services that are running in the background, things that you would probably start up with like system D or something like that. And it'll also allow you to see processes and packages and stuff like that. So if you wanted to uninstall applications from here, you could actually do that. And one of the things that it does is it will actually single out snap packages. So if you wanted to uninstall snap packages from here, you could do so. Now I don't have any snap packages installed. So that was uh, just a very brief view of that screen, but it does allow you to uninstall that stuff from here if you want to inst uninstall that. Uh, in terms of settings and stuff, it doesn't have a ton of settings, so that you don't have to deal mess around with all that. So basically what Stacer is, is a kind of a jack of all trades maintenance tool. It allows you to, to just do a ton of stuff for your system, system startup applications, uh, C stats and stuff like that. So that is Stacer. Stacer is one of those applications that I tell pretty much everybody to download because it just does a ton of different stuff. And honestly, it's one of those applications that can kind of replace a whole bunch of other applications if you need to do some of this stuff. So that is Stacer, and that is it for this video. If you have any applications that are similar to this vein that will help you do maintenance on your system, leave those in the comment section below. I'd really love to hear from you. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. It really does help the channel and helps the video. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Robert, Sid, Devon, Patrick, Fred, Kramer, Meglin, Jackson, Knife Tools, Steve A, Cyber Linux, Garrett, Samuel, TKB, TGB, Mitchell, J-Dog, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin E, Andy Ross, Eduardo, Merrick, Camp, Josh, Lee, Peter A, Chris Wolf, Dark Band, Six, Primus, and PM. Thanks everybody for watching. I really do appreciate it. And see you next time.